Hi, I'm Noah. Hi, I'm Adam. And we're in the band Passionate Mammals, and we... And, um... We write songs a lot. Yeah, exactly. So, here's, uh... Here's, they're really good. Yeah, they're not bad. Super good. Yeah. We're experts. So, here's some of the, uh... Here's some of the, the questions. Uh, question one, and the, these, these, these are from the kids. Um, what are some good topics to put in a song, slash what do you consider a good topic when composing? Um, well, we're, uh, oh, how about you, Noah? This seems like you, you have... Well, I've, uh, I've, I've got a couple uh, that I already wrote down. Uh, love, heartbreak... Uh, work, worry, excitement. Um, so, so, so there's, there's, you can, you can do things from your own perspective and from your own life and from your own experience. So like stuff like, Hey, I, I have a crush on that person. Oh, Hey, like, I don't want to do my homework. Like, you know, you can, you can write it about sort of a, a thing I do a lot is just sort of like, what is a thing I'm feeling or like trying to think, like thinking about right now and trying to work through right now. Oh, I can use that. Um, but there's also totally, um, you can do other stuff like, you know, reading a newspaper article and being like, hmm, I wonder what it must have been like to be Martha Stewart when she was in jail, you know, or, um, you know, uh, you should, something about your friends' lives or, you know. You should always only write songs about things that are hard and upsetting for you to think about. So sometimes there are things that if you think about them, even the thought makes you feel scared or like you should stop thinking about that. And when you write songs, you should force yourself to think about something that really upsets you and make that the main sentence in the song. That's pretty good. Um, and that that requires some, um, you know, some 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 grit maybe. But uh, it gets it gets easier the more you do it. Um, all right. Question number two: uh, How do you think of topics? How do you like to create, what do you like to create songs about? Okay, so that kind of is covered by the first one, but... That's pretty similar, yeah. One really good thing um, is things people say. The main, really the main place to get your main hook for a song is someone will say something, some perfect sentence, that's really clever and you really like. Because it's really hard to know how good something you say is. Yeah, that's true. A lot of time when you come up with your own hook, it can be really hard to know if it's really a good sentence or not, or a really good phrase. It could be a hook. But when somebody says something, you're like, darn, that's a hook for a song. Well, you know, because you didn't write it. Yeah, I have, I, have a, uh, I have a whole big text file in my phone of things that people say that sound like they could be song lyrics or titles. And granted, I haven't used most of them, but theoretically I could at any time. Um, that's where I, I, my songs are almost always that. Sometimes it's something, something like, like said that happened out loud. Like 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 you were just like walking down the street and somebody's like, "Hey Adam, I'll bear your flaming harp for you." Yep, that's how that happened. <laughs> um, I, I I know there's there's some possibly apocryphal stories about uh, like some of those early Beatles songs like Eight Days a Week" and like "Hard Day's Night" that Shoot. like like Paul's chauffeur chauffeur or something. He's like, "Hey, they're in Germany, right?" Oh, 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 that would, so here's the that thing. would explain it. Here's the thing. The Beatles have... Foreign people say hilarious things. Well, we don't want to diminish things that, that people who are speaking in a second language say. But a lot of Beatles songs have these phrases that sound like they could be common expressions in English, but they just aren't. In like, English, we just don't say please, please me. But we kind of could if there was an alternate <laughs> universe of English. But there is an alternate universe of England. And it's called and German. It's Germany. Yes. <laughs> and that's where the Beatles were, and people would try to speak English in ways that seem normal and intuitive. <laughs> and so the Beatles have all these great phrases like, please, please me, hard day's night, um, eight days a week. That's probably just someone trying to be clever. Um, there's another really good one. Um, nope. Those are the only, the only three clever phrases in Beatles songs. Yep. Yeah, after that, it was all downhill. They they tried to get philosophical. Um, all right, let's see. Next one. Uh, how do you know if your lyrics are good? Um, 
You can't. Yeah. Um, I mean, but, but, but here, so, you know, um, what I, what I wrote down, uh, was, you know, it's hard to know if someone, if somebody, if other people like them, that's good. Um, sort of the core is if I feel like they express something, like if I, if, if I read them and I feel like that's true, like that's, but you know, there's such a thing as being too on the nose and, you know, but like. A lot of times you need to hear how they actually sound out loud. So a lot of times you can write what seems like a really good lyric, but then you kind of don't find out if the lyric works or not until you actually hear a recording of someone's trying to sing the lyric over the music. Yeah, that's 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 true. Um, also, no lyrics are really good or bad independent of a melody. Any Any lyric, if it was coupled to the right melody, could be really good. Oh, yeah. That gets harder and harder. Oh, I'm going to make a really developmentally inappropriate abstraction now. Um, You can't... Yeah. Do you love it so much? (laughs) If you really love it, that either means it's really good or you can't use it because you're just so into it that that you've lost all perspective. You like it so much. You should should kind of make you laugh, I think. Mm. Yeah. It should yeah. seem like a joke. Like you should, you should chuckle to yourself, even if it's the saddest thing ever. If you say the saddest thing <laughs> ever, but it makes you kind of chuckle, even though it's so sad, that's probably that's a good sign. Yeah, probably. Um, yeah, and sometimes it can be like a really like cruel thing or like a really horrible thing. And if it like feels true or feels kind of funny, like you, you know, don't bully, but. Um, at least in the tradition of songwriting. Yeah, like, like, like you don't, you know, there's, 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 there's... Don't write songs about other kids. No, but you can write songs about... Other kids that don't exist. About, yeah, or you can write songs about yourself. Everything they're trying to tell you not to say or do to be nice, I don't know, maybe you'll find another way to write songs when you're nice all the time. Okay, next question. Um, how do you use figurative language, parentheses, metaphor, simile, and hyperbole Wait, how old are in your you guys? songs? Do we know how old they are, Noah? I don't remember. I don't know. They're in they're in a I grade. They're elementary school. Uh, they're, they're yeah, I somewhere. This was kindergarten, but that doesn't seem like no. It, it's like 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 I don't know. Like I I don't actually remember. I thought this was kindergarten. It's not kindergarten, but it's not like high school. I don't think. I don't know. They've got to be in junior high um, asking that question, or if their teacher made them ask it. That that might have been a teacher question. Um, uh, oh man, it'd be cool if that if you're in kindergarten and your teacher is saying metaphor to you. I really approve. I don't know. I learned about like like imaginary numbers when my dad like when I was in like you know first grade or something. And I didn't understand them at all. I just thought that they sounded cool. Um, and we grew up to be really smart, but helpless <laughs> adults. So. If your teacher is, if you're in kindergarten right now and your teacher is telling you about metaphor and figurative language, you're going to grow up to be really smart but helpless too. I, I think this is older than kindergarten, but I guess there's only I'm one sorry, way to find guys, to find if out. You're in fifth grade that you're probably so offended right now. I I, I don't know. No, I, I, your audience is the answer to these <laughs> questions. Um, so okay, so figurative language. How do you come up with figurative language? Um, All language is figurative language. So 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 yeah that that's that's a thing is that a lot of things which are literal can also feel figurative. Um so I've I've one song uh that um that the chorus is uh it it's cold and it's wet and it's raining today but the sun sets prettier with shades. Um and you know it it's um it's one it's a thing which literally came from this is an observation that I sort of noticed and thought of and I'm like oh wow like these polarized lenses in my glasses like you know Etc. Like like they make the sunset look really pretty, but there's also a sort of an underlying metaphor in there of like um, you know like something uh, some uh, you know sunsets something ending. There's there's a there's an idea of um, you know beauty that you can only view through some sort of protection uh, that protection that also evokes coolness that there, there's there, there's all these things and all these there, all these layers um you know more um the problem the thing about this 
Or maybe if you guys are, are really old or really smart, this or might precocious. help. Or precocious. Um, is that... Alright, the simple way to say it is all sentences you say have multiple meanings. It's not yes. possible for you to say a phrase, no matter how everyday, how plain, how simple, that doesn't have multiple meanings, and many of those meanings... That doesn't have multiple meanings that can't be analyzed as figurative language. Um, if you said a sentence that only meant one thing, you wouldn't be speaking English, you would be speaking the language of mathematics, and that might not even be true. Or computer code. Um. But... That, there's also this whole idea of figurative language might not even be right because the idea of figurative language suggests that language has two elements. One that is all kind of like mystical and magical where metaphors happen that you can't understand. Or is, and this other one that's like pointing at things plus grammar is like math. But that's <laughs> not true. There, there, there's, there's <clears throat> looking through a lot of my high school era, junior high era poetry, there's a lot of stuff that's like, you know, some of it's just like, you know, talking about, you know, there's, there's, there's a lot of stuff, but there, there's definitely a lot of songs that I wrote that just sort of were, you know, word salad, you know, just sort of like, here's a bunch of, a bunch of words and stuff strung together. And it, it wasn't even really like, like, cause there's, oh, yeah. there's here's, like, here's a better answer, right? A lot of word salad and eventually you'll start writing lucid metaphors. The way to get good at writing lucid metaphors is to write lots and lots of word salad until you're sick of doing that. Yeah, um, and, and, and you can come up with some cool stuff. Um, but, you know, there, there's also like... Yeah, you'll hit metaphors. Uh, but there, there's also sort of imagery, and, and imagery is sort of, you know, it's like you're sort of painting a picture of something, of, you know... Hey, there's some guys standing in line at a Starbucks, and you know this guy's bald, and you know you can just sort of describe that kind of thing, you know. And there's a lot of songs that are, you know Paul Simon or you know Billy Joel or whatever that are all you know. Piano Man is literally just hey, look at that guy. Hey, look at that guy. Hey, look at that guy. You know, but um, but in describing this person, you're you know describing this world, and you're 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 creating this sort of idea. And you know, Adam said like you know, there's no good lyrics or bad lyrics necessarily it just depends on how you sing them it's, it also depends on well, where you, they go in the I song say that, that i just meant that that was a very confusing thing to say and i just <laughs> meant that potentially any set of words combined with the right melody could be something really cool but but they also could be bad in reality there's gonna in reality, there's a lot of lyrics that you're just not going to be able to make good with a cool... They're good lyrics for you and the melodies you write. Yeah. So, okay. And it's better if they're good. Yeah. Um, it's probably better if they're good by themselves. But, but, but you know, there's, there's also, you know, there's also a, a proud tradition of, of lyrics that yeah, sound really bad yeah, retrieving, but, yeah. but but yeah. but but they actually they sort of go loop around until they they're they're good again and etc all right yeah actually a lot of songwriting is redeeming language that like poetry people or literature would look down on and like kind of redeeming the way oh well, redeeming is a hard word um kind of taking the way people actually speak and showing using melody to show the beauty of it in yeah. sort of uh, act of, I'm going to say an act of democracy. You guys know what democracy is? Probably not, because in the future where you live, there's no democracy. I, 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 they're going to be viewing this in the future, but not like in... in yeah, but they're already being... Not in like 20, I'm sure, you know, 20... I'm like, if they even have... thousand years class, in the future. they probably don't. They're being taught that democracy is evil. Like, right? You guys just learned democracy is evil last period, right? <laughs> Uh, right. Moving on. Um, will the melody and lyrics clash if you use certain ones? Um, so what, what I'm what I'm what I'm guessing you're sort of going for um, is like okay is is you can have certain you like there there there's there there's some cliches you know minor chords are sad major chord you know or you know or minor <laughs> things are are sad major things are happy there's you know there's certain you know there, there's there, there's a lot of Cliches and cliches are cliches because you know at some point they work. 
Um, but you know, there, there's a lot of things about you know if if something is wait, going wait, up, it's uplifting. If it's going down, it's de- it's you know you seem to, depressing. You seem to, you're, can we talk about it a little more literal way? Go for it. Because whenever you speak, any words you say, they have certain natural rhythms. And when you speak, you have a melody. If you listen to me speak right now, it goes up, it goes down. And for the most part... When you part, speak, you have a melody. That, yeah. that melody that happens when you speak comes from the words themselves. So in a very, very direct way, words and melodies can clash. Because words in and of themselves suggest kind of a limited number of rhythms and a limited number of melodies that go with the rhythm and melodies of the words. So if you take words that naturally in English have, would tend to have a kind of rhythm and melody, and then you try to put them to a kind of rhythm, musical rhythm and melody that's outside of the rhythms and melodies that could be natural for those words in English, you'll get a clash. And sometimes clashes can be really cool, um, and sometimes they can make the emotions of the words just really go away. Yeah, there, there's, there's, you know, there, there's a bunch of songs that have, you know, uh, that that, you know, songs that are about you know killing somebody or something that are set to really upbeat melodies or songs that are, um, you know, even like like. Uh, yeah, two different kind, two completely different answers. Don't get confused. We're not talking about the same thing at all. No, we should point that out. <laughs> One is the idea that there are sad words and happy words and sad melodies and happy melodies. Those just should clash. Like, you probably want your happy words and your sad melodies to go together or vice versa. It's just usually better when those have a contradiction. Well, well here, here, here's, here's, but, like, here's like a specific, um, a specific example of what I think Adam's, Adam was talking about is like when you ask a question, your voice generally tends to go up. Yes, like, so you could write a melody. That are we not men? We are Devo. You know, um, that's actually. If you listen to some bands like say Devo, you'll see that even instead of using use musical melodies, they'll take the natural intonation of speech and just kind of exaggerate it, and it kind of lines up with a melody. Yeah, or you the B fifty twos, or a so lot of other bands from that everybody era. Everybody who, everybody who. Um, that's the best way to get the lyrics across. Yeah, and you and 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 you can even you know you can even start off start doing that, and then can as I you work the song more, then you can sort of make them more into real melodies or go back and forth. We have one song we're still sort of trying to figure out that at various times has had a vocal has had a sung melody versus a spoken melody, and anyway. Um, so let's see. Uh, what are some good ways to end a song? Uh, abruptly is a great way. Yeah, I, I like abruptly too. Um, I, I I can. Classic way is to take the chorus, do it double length, and then kind of do an instrumental fade out. On Ooh, that's a good one. The chords of the double length chorus. Oh, that's an, very classic. Another another good one is a coda, which is a section that's never been heard in the song before. That's specifically made to loop and repeat and then fade out. I especially like when. It's like a whole other. If you can imagine, it's the chorus to a whole other awesome song just appears at Ooh. the end. Ooh, that's what I like. But most pop songs do double chorus, double the length of the chorus, and then kind of a maybe like an instrumental fade out that's kind of related to the chorus, but not exactly the chorus. Yeah. Here, here's um. um yeah, yes. Yeah, so laying out. Also, listen, I like abruptly. We both like abruptly a lot. Yeah. If you guys learned what a five chord is. Just stop there. But no. <laughs> Like, I mean, that, but that's because we, we, we have some sympathy. I don't know. Well, there, 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 I mean, if, if it, if it works, if it works lyrically, there's, it, it, it really can work, you know, work really well. There's, um, I was going to give you two examples off the top of my head. There's a, um, there's an Arcade Fire song, uh, called Antichrist Television Blues, um, that, that ends super abruptly and you just... It like it's kind of the the climax of the song, and you're just like, oh no, what? Um, like, the and thing. then and, and wait, uh, let me. And and there's there's also a there's a song on the new Coldplay album, which um, which the the those last lyrics are, you disappear, and you sort of don't even notice that the song ended, and then suddenly it suddenly it's gone. And those are two sort of very different 
effects that both come from ending the song abruptly and without warning. So, so that, that's the cool thing about song techniques is one technique doesn't necessarily mean one thing any more than, you know, a comma necessarily always I, needs a I comma. I think one thing about abruptly is that if your song is very, like, intense and personal and it's about communicating, uh, like, personal, emotional, or intellectual message and getting the people who are really, really into it to have a strong response... You might do something and end the song abruptly. If you want it to be a fun thing that most people like, you should probably have a real like smooth, satisfying outro with like a simple technique like double chorus, like vamp related to the chorus at the end. Yeah. You're always going to have a thing where like there's the things most people like are the things they're used to hearing. And then there are people who are really, really into music. Maybe you who like to hear the things they're not used to hearing. And um... but 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 here but but here's something my 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 dad um who's a musician used to and I, I think he picked this up from somebody else but he he said that when if you're doing something experimental you should don't experiment with everything all at once. So don't try, you know, don't, you know, do a tonally, you know, not use chords, also not use rhythm, also, you know, sing in, don't, don't use language, you know, also, you know, run around naked, covered in blood or something like, you know, don't, um, might want to censor that part. Um, but you know, I mean, if you did all of those things, you, <laughs> if you did all of those things, all of those things, you would be a famous musician to a certain community of people. Yeah, you, you, you would... You, you would, would have to go all the way and do the last one, though. Right. Um, yeah, you, you'd be... Uh, what, what's that guy? Um, but... Um, yeah, that guy already... He did not use language. Either. But... Um, but, but so, so, so more, more, more effective is experiment with one or two things while keeping the rest of the technique sort of, you know, pretty tight. So, you know, you can, you can do all sorts of cr strange chord progressions or something, but if you keep, like, a solid you know, rhythm underneath it, it's like, st stick a 4-4 four, four beat under something, almost anything sounds good. Really. Like, like crazy, crazy abstract poetry sounds good. Like, like crazy weird instrumental stuff. If you have like a, you know, a solid beat underneath it, it sounds, it sounds okay. So that's, so, you know. Well, it's like music is a language. So if you want to add a new word to your language, you usually need to... It's good to, to give it context. You need to define it. Yes. So if you have a cool idea... You can define what that idea means musically and emotionally by putting it in context of musical ideas people already know. And then you could, for instance, you could idea introduce ideas gradually until you're speaking almost your own completely original language, which is like what happened with a lot of European classical composers mm. who became, you know, the most respected musicians like ever. Um, by the time Beethoven got to his fourth... Beethoven, like, start out with basically the same vocabulary as, say, Mozart, and he's got a few of his own ideas, and over the course of his body of compositions, adds more and more of his own ideas till you get to his last quartets, which um, sound like things people wrote in the 20th century, or, like, almost could not sound like music if to s you weren't used to that sort of thing. Um, and made this music that actually no one else would really make music that sounded like that for a hundred years, when everyone would. Um, so, so kind of uh, nicely segueing from that, what is your favorite type of chord to use in a song? Major, major minor, augmented, or diminished? Um, and we can maybe expand that to what are, what are your favorite techniques in general, but I, let's go for chords specifically. I like um, a major triad with a flat nine added in there. That's pretty good. How, how since does you said augmented and diminished? How does that sound? Uh, so, I guess, so, I guess it diminished. So major major chord. Uh, right. Well, I guess actually flat second. So. Wait, that's that's the wrong one. Okay, flat second. Yeah. But people always say flat nine. Um. The thing is, this note is so far out of grammar with the chord that it doesn't take away from what the chord means. 
Yeah, it just makes it, it just weird. makes it sound gross. But it still can sound like it's you can still understand it as a major chord in order like It's like a flat two blues, um, but um, but that that you can that's still hear the chord progression real well, even though it sounds dissonant continually. Yeah, well, uh, uh, the 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 Beatles song "Dr. Roberts" uh, has a has a prominent uh, flat two. It's or, uh, right right in there, and and that that adds a real nice like bit of tension. Yeah. Or no or no 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 no. It's not Dr. Wait, is it Dr. Robert or is it? Um, um, is it the one that goes, I've got time? I don't know. All right. So, um, yeah, so that's, um, we're not really keyboard players here. Yeah, we are. We're, we're not expert keyboard. That's, that's not our, our primary instrument, either of us. So, um, I, I've I've been told uh, that I write a lot of songs in D. Or that that's sort of going into keys rather than than chords. Yeah, it but like uh, you like major chords. Yeah, I, I I tend to like major chords. Um, I I like there there there's there's certain you'll find there's certain chord progressions that you sort of get into a lot. Um, and there's certain things you know and 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 I say you know em- embrace it until it gets to the point where all of your songs sound the same and then you know keep you know maybe maybe don't you, you know you you want to um but yeah I mean like diminished are Diminished are, are great ways to transition between chords. Yeah, diminished um, are really good because you can go from the seventh, um, the seventh, not the seventh chord, like the seventh scale degree. You can. Um, oh, I guess it's not really because if you're in a major, if you're like say an A minor, if you do the B diminished before the E to get back to the A minor. I, it's really dramatic. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You can, you can, you can do a lot of drama with those crazy. Uh, yeah, diminished chords do a lot. Of crazy drama. ones. Okay. Um, moving on. Uh, how do you come up with a, with a rhythm to go along with your melody? Um, again, sort of. What it has a rhythm in it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mel- I mean, melodies. Melody is notes plus rhythm, essentially. Um, but I mean, if if you're just thinking of, of, I guess. Rhythm should- that, what kind of rhythmic orchestration should the accompaniment have? I guess. Yeah, I, and and again, like a word, like or a phrase has a rhythm. You know, like I am, si-, you know, hey, pass me that battery. Like yeah, da, da 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 da. They you probably know, there's... mean in the arrangement, like what kind of drum pattern or what kind of rhythm pattern. Should... Yeah, and 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 again, that's a lot of that's just sort of experimentation and trying out different stuff. I Contrast I strongly here. recommend. Very, very strongly recommend record uh, getting a little uh, audio recorder. I've got uh, besides the one that I'm using to record this right now, it's a video recorder. Um, I've I got one of these these guys right right here. Um, but you know you can use the voice the voice notes recorder on your phone. Um, Why did I recommend don't do that? Because here's the thing. Oh yeah. Before people used to, it seems like the logical thing to do in your life as a music person. Counterpoint. Is to record yourself. And then listen to how you sound to other people, and then you can kind of, over time, make yourself better and better at music by listening to how you sound through the recorder and get, like, an objective perspective. But people were better at music before they could do that. And (laughs) classical musicians don't do that, and they get way better um, at just playing. Well, yeah. So I think maybe that doesn't work for some reason. Yeah, I I mean, it's... Great musicians often say they hate hearing recording themselves and avoid listening to recordings of themselves. I, I I've it's I've definitely common. I mean I, I've 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 I, I, I guess it sort of depends on, on how you want to uh Oh Alyssa and Dan are on their way, they were caught in traffic. Um so it, it a lot of it depends on how I guess there's a lot of sort of what's your sensibility. You know, for, for me I've I've been recording myself and listening back for a long time, and a lot of that sort of, you know, it's it's just sort of something that I've gotten used to, and something that I, you know, I review recordings yeah, to to pick up ideas I and stuff. But there's I'm also is also kind of ridiculously out of context in time. Like I'm sure you guys 
Are, well, you don't want to get recording, discouraged, though, yeah. be, because I, I... Well, but making multi-track <clears throat> recording, recording it, like, practicing and recording, you're probably not even doing a thing where you're, like, practicing and trying to get better at an instrument. You're probably just Maybe. doing a thing where you're making music on a multi-track recorder, like, your whole life, and you'll, like, never have the experience of, like, sitting in a room practicing an instrument. Um, so... What I'm saying. Well, 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 don't, 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 don't make that assumption. It's, it's def- recording definitely makes you better. Like yeah, recording and working on music projects and doing multi-track recording. That's definitely everything about that's good. Do that as much as you can. Just yeah, yeah, I, I, I do. I do, do that. I, 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 like, I don't, do highly. Don't, don't go outside. Don't, just, <laughs> don't practice. Just make multi-track recordings forever. That that advice we can all follow. Um, what 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 I, what I was going to say is that we is that my um. I've definitely had the experience where sort of where I have played with people who are less experienced and they'll they'll hear um you know I'll record them I'll, I'll record a practice session or a show or something and they'll be there's a plate over there if you want to put them on the plate um there's um and hey, you, you and know we, and they'll unusably long for a class well they they can listen to it at home I don't know um but uh, we're 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 almost done. We only have one more question. So 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 I've so the the experience uh, that I've I've had is people will have will play a practice will will practice they'll play a show they'll feel really good about it and then a week or two later I'll you know I'll I'll finish uploading the uh, the recording and they'll listen to it or they'll watch it and they'll go oh my god that was horrible because they don't have um they they, they don't feel the context anymore at the time it was. It was oh my god! I didn't know what I was doing, and it sounded great. Or I didn't know what I was doing. You know, like like um, there there's there's a sort of objectivity that you get, but it's not really objective because what one recorder that's sitting in one part of the room heard, you know, like 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 that's not objective. That's just another way of viewing at it of viewing it, and it's it you know ex- it could be accentuating stuff that isn't out of tune. It could be accentuating. You know, background noise. You know, etc. That that wasn't even really the question. I'm really getting off a ten. Um, okay, uh, I have writer's block. How can you get over it, or how do you persevere through a writer's block? Go, Adam. Um, just try to write the worst song you can. <laughs> um, whatever. By the way, we are eating these tiny pies that we made for Thanksgiving. Yeah, and there's cheese on them. You put and there's cheese, cheese on, on them. them. Um. Yeah. Say, I'm gonna write the worst song I can. And write that song. That's pretty good. I should try that. Um, how many songs have you written? I don't know, like a hundred. Yeah, I was thinking somewhere. There's like twenty, forty, eighty. I don't like know. there's like always fragments of songs and like little songs and so like, many fragments. Like oh my every god! Every day, like you know, something happens. You write a little song in your head. So. Um. But then there's like songs that you develop over for a long time, and oh. Probably in terms of like heavily long term developed songs, maybe like thirty or forty. Yeah, I was thinking something like that. But ever some giant number. <laughs> um, having a hard time coming up with lyrics. So, any tips about coming up with lyrics? The things people say thing. Word salad. Write the worst song you can. We have a lot of coming up with lyrics. Something um back in the day people used to